Do we have too much government? We need to put uh, people in ahead of corporate profits. This system is so lopsided. This threat is a real threat to democracy. And I think that's really important. That's something we haven't been doing in this country for a long time. Where do you start? What do you do? How do you do it? Access to Democracy and other Egan Community Television programming is supported by Thomson Reuters, makers of Westlaw Next and based in Egan. Through Westlaw Next and other innovative online services, Thomson Reuters is the world's leading source of intelligent information for businesses and professionals. Online at ThomsonReuters.com and by U.S. Federal Credit Union the member-owned financial institution offering service, value, and experience you can trust to the greater Twin Cities community. <laughs> Welcome. We return Access to Democracy. I'm your host, Alan Miller. Uh, we are proceeding anon with a return guest, been here many times, Chuck Samuelson of the uh, Civil Liberties Union, American Civil Liberties Union of Minnesota, a proud Syracuse graduate. Uh, That's true. Although, as I am, a little bit embarrassed about things that are going on there athletically right now, but. Uh, Good school, anyway. Good, yeah. me good memories, also. Yeah, fairly good. What I remember <coughs> of it was, was, was fondly. Now, here's the Civil Liberties Union, uh, which is really the protector of everybody's rights. And I, I pick up the paper, <laughs> and I see a coalition for public safety. And among the participants who are partnering there are the Koch brothers and the ACLU. What is that all about? Well, the ACLU has been concerned about the over-incarceration in the United States for 20 years at least. 2.2 million people. More than anybody else. Bigger percentage of our population in jail than China or Iran or any of the, no matter who the bad guy is that you happen to hate today, we put more of our people behind bars. Uh, primarily it's the war on drugs, but in any case, the conservatives, the, the Koch brothers are a perfect example of conservatives, never thought much about the issue, but now the bills are coming due. And all of a sudden, it's become apparent that we are spending a great deal of our national treasure putting people behind bars. Billions, billions of billions dollars. and billions and billions, putting <clears throat> people behind bars for crimes for which they really shouldn't be incarcerated. They're being charged with felonies for crimes that should be petty misdemeanors or misdemeanors. So the, they approached the ACLU and said, let's work together on this. And we said, sure, why not? So there's a group of about 10 organizations that basically locked themselves in a room and uh, came up with this. Uh, the Center for American Progress, which is sure. certainly to the left. Yep. And I uh, mean, we weren't the only progressives. Yeah. Uh, there was a bunch of them. So anyway, mm -hmm. they've formed a joint cause to reduce the number of people behind bars, and we'll see what happens. Well, I think the average cost per prisoner is something in excess of $35,000 a year. Uh, oh, at least, yeah. So if you take that times over 2 million, 2.2 million, you, you understand. And of course, the conservatives were all in favor of private prisons about a decade ago. Right. Until private prisons, which were profit-making, started upping the bills also, so that uh, that made it even worse. Right, and, and it's not mm -hmm. just private prisons. I mean, you know, you have, you have private corporations that provide medical care to prisoners, and those are, you know, the, the care is substandard and the price is exorbitant. So, I mean, it's a, it is a situation where, uh, frankly, people are starting to say, enough is enough. And, you know, it's true in, in the whole policing issue. The, the conservatives and the progressives are getting together on, on civil liberties issues. I mean, Rand Paul, if you're not careful listening to him, you'd think he was an ACLU executive director. Um, 
and and they talk about things like privacy in a way that that is um, frankly shocking for a lot of people but it's been going on for the last four or five years well among privacy we're talking about data privacy right and there's certainly some initiatives that are going on right now right now there's a there is a bill to create a constitutional amendment in the state of Minnesota that would write into our Fourth Amendment electronic data so that, I mean, it's only three words, but basically the Fourth Amendment, which was written in 1790-ish, um, calls for a, a search and seizure, a, a, requires a warrant. Right. But only for your persons, your place, and your and your papers, and this would add your electronic data. So, for example, your cell phone, uh, the stuff you've saved to the cloud, uh, your emails, those sorts of things would now be covered, and and the police would be required to get a warrant before they took those and used them against you. You know, I go out on a, on a clear day, and I look at the clouds. But I haven't seen the one that has all my data in it. Ah, uh, you know what I like about this? Because I'm 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 old, and I remember when IBM had these giant uh, banks of uh, data banks where they would store all your records. That Alan is the cloud. They've sort of come full circle. We're no longer storing it in our workplaces. We're shipping it over the phone lines to some place in Utah or wherever, we'll and, and in these big windowless buildings, which are nothing but giant uh, repositories. repositories of our data, which is what IBM did back in the early 60s. This is pretty funny. Now you say you're old. I remember when we didn't have computers, period. So. Well, I don't want to date myself. Well, but, I don't want to uh, date myself, but my father made all of us boys learn how to use a slide rule. And when the girls came along, by then computers were ubiquitous enough. So I had to learn on an abacus. There you so go. <laughs> <laughs> well, what can I say? <laughs> I had to count rocks, and I had to take my <laughs> shoes off <laughs> to get past 10. So there have been a lot of issues about privacy, <coughs> not just data privacy. Right. That's true. That we've been involved in lately. That's true. For example, um, you know, there's almost no place in the Twin Cities that you can go to where you're not on some form of camera. Either private, you know, like on the sides of Target stores and Walmart. And all of those are, are given to the government, all those images. Um, there have been a number of TV reporters that have done whole reports where they have gone from their house to, to their work and always been on a camera someplace. So um, that's, that's been an issue the ACLU has been fighting for a long time because, you know, there is no specific right to be private in a public place, but there is this sort of unspoken right that you're not going to be spied on. And that's gone away with these, these cameras. Now the ACLU along with conservative groups, are working to put a, a warrant requirement on drones. That's so, the next thing I was going to bring up, because right. that's, that's the next invasion of privacy that's becoming more and more prevalent. Well, yeah, and, and the drones, um, you know, the big fear that we have of drones is that they're going to spy on us. And the police up in northern Minnesota, the, the uh, Homeland Security people are patrolling the, uh, the, you know, the Boundary Waters area to make sure that uh, terrorists aren't, uh, you know, coming across from the Canadian border, because I know that's a huge problem. And so um, they're flying them over the Indian reservations, because that's federal property, and <laughs> the natives are shooting them down. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, well, I guess you have the right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you I don't know, know if they have the right or not. Over your property, uh, in, in in Colorado, there's a town where you actually do have the right. If it flies over your house, you can take your shotgun and shoot it down. And they're limited to 500 feet, so you'd probably need supposedly. A, no, that's the the FAA just came out with their new rulings. They can't fly over 500 feet high. What we've seen in the papers in the last couple of weeks. Uh, a pilot was landing someplace 4,000 feet up, and there was a drone that was very nearby in a commercial airliner. Yeah, and that mm. drone, the guy who was flying that drone, my guess is he's, he's been charged. I uh, would hope so. Yeah, I mean, so the, the FAA has put out rules, and the, and, and the rule says 500 feet. And what the ACLU says is, look, government, if you want to track Chuck Samuelson, and you get a warrant. 
I mean, if, if I'm in my backyard or my wife's in our backyard or whatever, you know, and you, you want to find out what we're doing back there, I suppose you can, but get a, get a warrant. Um, Which takes us to police body cameras. Body cameras are, are particularly interesting. The ACLU originally was opposed to body cameras because we saw them as a potential, frankly, surveillance tool by law enforcement. But because of Black Lives Matter, because of Ferguson, because of all these other things that are starting to boil up, we thought, all right, here's a technology that can absolutely prove what went down. Pretty much like the cameras in police cars now, which they all have and which we have seen many times, yeah. but they should be on all the time. Exactly, because what we've seen constantly, <clears throat> and there was a last weekend or the weekend before in Chicago, there was a perfect example of it. There were seven police officers arresting one guy. There was kicking and tasing and a lot of yelling and screaming, and you hear a voice coming out and say, hey, this stuff, somebody shut your cameras off. This is So they shut the cameras off for two minutes, then flipped them back on just as the guy was getting put into the, the back of the car. Um, what the ACLU felt was that, that this needed to be nipped in the bud. You cannot have um, a situation where people can edit on the fly if you want to have a real record of what happened. And if the problem is trust on the part of the uh, population, or as the as pe police call us, civilians, then you have to um, you have to record everything that happened. Now I understand if you're in the bathroom you won't want to record it, and and there are ways around that. And I can understand some like confidential inf informants who don't want to you know reveal their identity. I get that. There's ways you can do it. You can have certain kinds of flagging procedures that block it down at the station. All sorts of things. But fundamentally. If you restrict it and make it all private, which is what the bill that's currently floating through both the House and the Senate um, does, if you do that, then you're not going to solve the reason that the ACLU thinks you ought to do it, and that is the credibility of the, of the police officer him, himself or herself. Um, the uh, Representative Cornish in the House, and he's a police officer, have, has introduced a bill that's been picked up by um, uh, Senator Latz in the Senate, and, and they are pushing their bill through that, that makes all the data private, and only the police can see it. Now you can, the big loophole is, you can see information about yourself, but only if, you, only if the police officer is recording it, and the police officer can decide what to record and when. And that's, to our point of view, a, a fallacious uh, a problem. Which is why it should be on constantly if we're going to have it, so that we can't doctor the right. results. Right. Now we'd be willing. We'd be <clears throat> willing to say, look, you can turn it off under certain circumstances, but the base assumption, the requirement, is that it needs to be on all the time, and you. That's the default position. And if you don't want it on, you better have a real reason for not doing it and, and have... It applies to uniformed officers anyway, not to detectives, as far as I know. As far as I know, that's true as well. So that's, you know, that's just started its journey through the legislature, and I'm not sure how it's going to end up. Um, you know, and we'll just, we'll just have to see about that. Now, a couple of weeks ago, I read about a big victory of the ACLU in Gaylord, Minnesota. Right. Uh, what was that all about with a $40,000 recovery, as a matter of fact? Yep. The, um, the situation is pretty simple. We believe that you should be arrested if you've committed a crime, okay? And, and we believe that the stopping of you to arrest you should not be based on the color of your skin or your native tongue. Racial profiling. Racial profiling, <coughs> and particularly, it's particularly bad in greater Minnesota. Um, in the Twin Cities, there are a number of, of uh, broadcast stations, and a great number, even bigger number, of radio stations, as well as programs like yours, and I mean, and um, there's 
multiple big newspapers. So there is a very vibrant press here that reports frequently on the behavior of government. If you go to some place like Gaylord, that's not the case. Small town, community. small town, weekly paper controlled by the powers that be, lawyers that basically at least half their clients, if not more, are government entities. If they if they file a lawsuit against the, any part of government, they're going to lose their jobs and and lose their houses. I mean, they're going to lose their livelihood. So what happens is you get these situations where, in the case of Gaylord, the the uh, the police department went off the rails. And they arrested our client. They arrested our client was in a car with another woman whom they wanted for false identification because she was in the country illegally. Now, the problem is that, that being in the country illegally is a federal offense. It's not, it's not a, a state offense. It's not a county offense. And God knows it's not a municipal offense. And the only reason that we have people in this country, immigrants in this country at all, is because they want jobs and they're willing to work at wages, for wages, that um, American citizens won't do the jobs for. I mean, these are not, you know, slaughtering chickens is not exactly a really attractive kind of a job. Well, they can go to Walmart now and start at $9 an hour. Wow. Well, you know, you, you, you want to know what the problem is? It's us. You look at the mirror. We don't want to pay the prices for somebody making $20 an hour. And so, you know, that, that's how come these things happen. But anyway, that's a whole different discussion. Our client was stopped and arrested by the police. She, she claimed that she was here legally. And they said, well, you have to prove it which is a little bit, you know. So then they said, well, I have the, she has said, I have the papers in my house. So they, they told her, take us to your house, show us the papers. So they went in. She went into her bedroom to get her papers, and they searched her house looking for some reason to put her in jail, didn't find one, and then saw that she had a green card, and then they, 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 they let her go. But she lost a day of work. Now, most people would say, well, you know, she could take a vacation day. She doesn't have vacation. It's like she doesn't have medical care. These these are these are low pay workers who have no benefits, and you know you show up or you lose your job. So um, we sued, and we sued the county, and we sued the city of Gaylord, Sibley County and Gaylord, and they finally settled, made changes and stuff. And in the meantime, the new police chief in Gaylord is Hispanic. So I mean, we now we there was a, a monetary. Uh, amount of money that was awarded. People should know that the ACLU doesn't get to keep that money. No, that money goes. That money goes to her. It was actually two awards. It was thirty thousand to her and ten thousand to the ACLU um, to pay for the cost of the case. Um, people don't understand. Even when your lawyers are free, um, the case costs are expensive. The depositions now are fifteen hundred dollars a piece, maybe more, depending on how long they are. And then you got a lot of printing costs. I mean, sometimes there's investigatory uh, right. matters and a more serious crime. Right, right. Although <coughs> you know, and court costs as well. Yeah, and court co and court costs have gone way up. Yeah, in state mm -hmm. court especially because that's how that's how we pay for our courts now is we raised the filing fees and we raised all the court costs. And anyway, so that's. That's that's how that case was uh, came about the settlement in that case and the object was uh, for the uh, the uh, ACLU the object was to demonstrate that the Constitution protects everybody everywhere in the state of Minnesota and not just here in the Twin Cities and Let's we've been doing that for fifteen years almost does a student have privacy uh, number one in their locker number two and what they put on social media. Um, students don't have privacy rights in their lockers. And the reason is that the schools don't want them to have privacy rights in, in their lockers. And so what the schools do is they say, well, we give you this locker. It's ours. We let you use it. So you don't have the right to say you need a warrant to go in and get it. That's that's the theory about that. What's been morphed is that this, the lockers can be opened by a school member without a warrant, but if a police officer wants to look through your locker, they need to get a warrant. And so 
and an odd sort of thing happens with lockers, and that is the the principal opens the locker with the police officer standing behind well, him. Not even necessarily, but yeah, usually. Then sees the contraband, shuts the locker, tells the police officer to get a warrant. He goes to the phone, gets a warrant from a judge, which is faxed over to the school. Once he gets that, then the police officer opens the locker with the pass key that the principal has given him, and bada bing, bada boom, they find the stuff. Now, students at home had a bad experience with a faculty member. A hall monitor, not a faculty member, a hall monitor. A hall monitor. Uh, well, you know, I says, mean, that's a... I hate him, or if I could, I would, uh, I would kill him, whatever. No, they didn't and say on that. On social media. Was, yeah, on social media, look, this is a sixth grade kid, and she... Um, writes on uh, on her Facebook, um, Mrs. Smith, the hall monitor, hates me, and I think she's a big fat jerk and blah blah blah. She's called into the to the principal's office because there's somebody assigned at that junior high school to monitor all of the social comments that their the kids are making. Talking about running up school costs. Well, I'm just saying that's how they deal with it, and that's how they dealt with it at the Minnewaska School District in uh, in uh, Central Minnesota. And that student was then disciplined yeah, in Glenwood, Minnesota. Yet, yeah, well, no. Then, then they said, "Don't do that again." So she goes back the, the next night and she writes on on her uh, um, on her Facebook, "Who ratted out on me? You're a jerk." Blah 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 blah. Which, of course, is also uh, intercepted because they have monitoring her stuff. And so then she's called into the principal's office and they said, "We want your password." And she said, "No, I don't have to give you my password." And this goes on for three or four hours without the parents ever being notified. And finally, and they humiliate her, and finally she gives up the password. And then they go in and they look at her website and they start laughing at her and saying how childish she is. And so, so when she goes home, she tells her mother she's never going back to school. Grader. She's 12 years old. And so the mother calls the ACLU. And Wally Hilke from Lindquist and Venom Law Firm agrees to take the case. And so he goes out, I mean, the Lindquist and Venom sends lawyers out, and we send our lawyer out uh, for, you know, I don't know how long the thing went, months and months. Um, eventually, they fired the superintendent, got a new superintendent, and they settled the, they settled the trial. And, and she got a, the, the mother and the daughter got a financial settlement. We got our case costs paid for, and, you know, they've changed their policies. This is not new news, by the way. Um, I've been with the ACLU for, of Minnesota for 19 years. And in my 19 years, this is the fourth one of these kind of cases. We've had, uh, we had another one in Greater Minnesota in Olivia where a bunch of girls wrote a zine, uh, which is kind of like an online magazine, right. in their, kind of in a sleepover. And, and they had, they had a who, you know, who's the hottest boy in school or the hottest eighth grade boy or something like that. And they were all kicked off sports teams in the plays and they were punished for it. Because again, that school had somebody whose job or part of, part of her job was to monitor online communications. Can't we assume that Big Brother is out there right now in our society like we've never had it before, that they're looking at us when we go through uh, a red light and there's a camera on us, that we, uh, our, our Facebook or whatever, our social media is being monitored. Uh, Big Brother is really, really part of our society. I now. would urge everybody to watch the movie Citizen Four. It's a documentary about uh, Snowden. And, you know, fundamentally, the NSA tapes everything. So all of your emails are, 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 are taped, all of your uh, voicemails, all your telephone calls, all of it's recorded, illegally recorded, but recorded. And the reason is that there's two parts. One is we live more electronic lives. We all have cell phones now, or not all of us, but a lot of us have cell phones. We do a lot of our business on cell phones. Our records are on cell phones. Every cell phone, every chip in every cell phone in the United States um, is broadcasting to NSA. They put a virus in. At the manufacturing level, it's manufactured into the chips. It was just an article in today's New York Times That's right. about uh, Levoso or whatever yeah. that outfit is called. Yeah, the biggest chip manufacturer in the world yeah. is in Holland. and It was hiding 
uh, spyware right. in your chip. But they didn't know it. They didn't know it. The NSA put it in secretly, and these guys made their chips, and they worked just fine. But the spyware is in the chip, and the NSA's collecting all of that data. Um, they, also are, they also are tapping everything that goes through all the nodes and all that stuff. Citizen Four, very interesting. It's, you know, uh, my review is it's a really interesting uh, documentary, but it's a little slow. And I think it's going to be on HBO. If you have HBO, you can get it. Or HBO and it's Go. also up for an Academy Award. Yep, it's in up fact, for an Academy by the Award. time people are seeing this, we'll know whether it won or not. Yeah, it won't win. It's not that good. It's not that good. It's, it's, <laughs> there are some slow spots. So. But uh, so anyway. what else is happening? Well, we're really um, active in the moment. legislature. We actually only have three minutes left. I'll give uh, you the three minute summary. So mm -hmm. we talked about body cameras, automated license plate readers. There are machines that, that look up every license plate that goes by them. The, the police, there's one bill that's in the, in the house that says the police can't keep that data. They have to dump it right away unless it's part of a, uh, an investigation. And then there's a bill. There's a bill through the uh, Senate that says they can keep the data for 90 days. So that's going to work itself out one way or another. I'm not. I'm not quite sure. We we are. There's another bill that the ACLU is pushing along with 87 other organizations. Some of them very conservative. Um, that say, if you're a felon, when you get out of jail, you can vote. If you're out of jail, so that's. That's coming through. We're hopeful about that one. Civil asset forfeiture, which we've been fighting with a very conservative group called the Institute for Justice. We've been fighting with them for the last five or six years. And now they have to convict you of an underlying crime. That was last year's win. And this year, we want the innocent owner defense. So that if, if you and I are a couple, we are on the title of the car, and I'm an alcoholic, uh, and they arrest me for DWI. They can't they they, forfeit the car. They, they can't forfeit the car, or <coughs> actually, you have the right to sue to, to keep to keep the car back, and there, there's various things like that. So th that's going on, um, and and then the other thing that we're doing is a civil asset forfeiture bill that requires the police to tell the the state what they spent the money on. It's seven million dollars a year that just disappears, and so um, we're we're doing you know we're doing those things, and then of course we're, there's a host of other things that we'll be that we'll be fighting on one sort of. The, the bad news many, comes. many things to talk about. Yep. Uh, some kind of depressing when we realize how our rights are shrinking and have shrunk well, it's in, because in we our gave, lifetimes. Alan, we give them up. <clears throat> I mean, I'll, I'll give you my 10 second speech. The government didn't take our rights, we gave them up. We said, here, spy on us for our protection. See also the Patriot Act. See also the Patriot Act. As so. we overreact in times of emergency. Sure, just like we did in World War II when we uh, put the Japanese in uh, prisoner of war camps. And not just the Japanese, I see that it's others also. Yeah, uh, Germans and uh, Italians too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, uh, it's never ending, but it's fascinating. And, yeah, it uh, is. That's why talking with Chuck Samuelson of the ACLU of Minnesota is always educational <laughs> and always interesting. And I wish you well, and thank you again. Well, thank you, and thanks for having me on your air. Anytime. Anytime.